Hi and welcome to day 5 of ConfigMess, our December user group party. I'm Johan. I'm Amy. And today's topic is something that is very, very dear to me. I've been spending five years doing this now. In-place upgrades, or as they're also known as Windows 10 servicing. Yes. So, there have been, I shouldn't say fights, but discussions in the community and organizations about which of the two methods that should be used. Mm -hmm. So what are the two, me two methods? Test sequences Yes. versus servicing plans. Yes, exactly. So they are both done with Config Manager, but they work very, very different uh, in, in how they're used. And to be very honest, <laughs> sequences is a lot of work, but they give you control. Servicing plans is less hard work, but they also give you less control. Yes. So um, we have a friend in the community, though, who has spent a lot of time on writing guidance around the servicing plan approach. Yeah, for and Config he Manager. also recently, recently became an MVP. That's so shiny. Yeah. So, so we are talking about Mr. Adam Gross. Yes. Congratulations. And, yes. Congrats. If you go to his blog, uh, squaredozen.com, I've actually done the hard work and searched for it for you. So if you're interested in servicing plans and you want to read a little bit more about it, this is a great place to start. Um, yes. You just search for one word in the search box, head config, and it will come up with these three posts. And this is basically a whole approach to what are servicing plans, what are the challenges that you're going to run into, and what Adam has done in his organization to answer those, those questions and remediate those problems. Yeah. So it's very interesting and it's Again, he went through a lot of work to oh, yeah. Those are, that's, come up with this. So when we say servicing plans are less work, don't think that they're no work. No, no. He's Clearly, got a lot of hours on yeah, those. There's, yeah, there's still a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and just to interject my own opinion, because I know that you love sequences, when I get asked, my response is, how well do you know your environment? How confident are you that you won't have any failures? There are a few small environments that I've seen where it's, just a few laptops, things like that, where, I'm, yeah, sure. If you want to use servicing plans, that's fine. But the minute you start adding complication into that, you're probably going to have better luck in sequences. Yeah. So as most of you <laughs> have heard me talk before, you know, I love sequences and probably will use them until, I don't know, time ends yes. <laughs> eventually. Uh, but the reason is it's, it's, for me, it's been a good approach to do things prior to the upgrade, during the upgrade, and after the upgrade. And when I started to set out to do this back in, in 2015, uh, ConfigMan didn't even have sequences. They came later as a download from a blog, and then eventually it became built into the product back in 15, 11-ish versions, mm -hmm. something like that. But in that time frame, if I go over to my demo environment real quick, Trying to actually open the right server. This is not going well at all. Here we go. How hard can it be? So here I have my config man environment, or, or one of them, and I have a bunch of sequences. And back in the dark ages, we used to have a single sequence that did everything. The pre-flight stuff, the changes, the upgrade, and the stuff that needs to be fixed afterwards. And even when you create a brand new sequence in Config Manager, and let me just do that. Create sequence. It's going to be an uh, upgrade. Going to call it IPU demo 01. I'm going to pick an upgrade package that I have. We're going to pick an 1809 for now. Pick an index. Sometimes you actually don't need to provide the product key. I've seen scenarios where it's needed, even the public one. Some updates, and next, next, finish. And now, even in this default template, you will actually see that Microsoft put in placeholders for you. They did that for a reason. They would not spend developer hours for something that was not needed. Mm -hmm. So here you see some example placeholders for pre-flight checks and the upgrade itself, and then stuff that you have to fix after the upgrade is done, like restoring stuff that the upgrade changed that you didn't like. Mm -hmm. 
But after a good few years, two years, two and a half, we learned that it was actually easier to split this out in two sequences. One sequence that only did the first part, this part right here. And then another sequence that actually did the upgrade. Because that allowed us to be less intrusive in terms of from the user side of things. Because this validation sequence, the pre-flight checks, we can run in the background. We didn't have to tell them. And we configured it in a way so that when that deployment was done, the machine automatically ended up in one of two collections. So if you, show, if you look at my collection structure, if I go to my OST things, here's an example where this was for 1803, but I have a collection named not ready for upgrade, and I have one that is named ready for upgrade. And there's just a query on this one. So if I go to this one and check properties, Go to membership, check the direct query. You can see that this is a query that looks for a status message of the first validation sequence deployment. So basically, if this deployment failed, put the machine in this collection. And for the other device collection I have, if deployment succeeded, put the machine in this collection. So basically, if I push out that validation sequence to 100 machines, they're going to end up in either of these two collections. And obviously, if they end up in the not ready, that will be someone from help desk that have to review and try to figure out why that happened. But the one that is ready, you can now go ahead and deploy your normal upgrade sequence to, to them or that part. And what I recommend doing in general is be a little bit nice allow the users to upgrade first themselves. So make it available for a good few weeks. But as the deadline starts to hit, then you start to be more nagging about them. And um, after a while, you simply push it. Sure. Yeah. And if you really want to get fancy, there is a website I highly recommend going to, and that will be the garytown.com website. Uh, it's maintained by Gary Block. Uh, I can't even spell to Gary Town how this is great. And his company, the large bank, they've been using this a long time. He recently posted their 1909 sequences. So that's pretty shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, very shiny. Yes. Over and out. See so you next make time. sure you check out the links and yes. we will see you next time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>